Like I, I, I was cheated. Like I'm just a nobody. That's just how I'll put it. You know, it's worse. I mean, every day we fight. It is. I'm telling you, the river. Every day we fight. You know, we argue. You know. I mean, many things. I, I mean, it's a lot for me to leave. For me to have left, rather. I mean. Welcome back. For years. Fans of 90 Day Fiancé have watched the tumultuous relationship between Angela Deem and Michael Ilisanmi play out on screen. Now, Michael has finally come forward to share his side of the story, revealing the true reasons why he decided to leave Angela and move on with his life. Michael, who has remained relatively quiet amid Angela's public tirades, has recently broken his silence in a candid interview offering an unfiltered look at the dynamics of their marriage and the pain he endured throughout the relationship. For quite some time, Angela has publicly humiliated Michael, painting him in a negative light and accusing him of being a scammer who only married her to take advantage of her. Angela went so far as to suggest that Michael, being Nigerian, fit the stereotype of a con artist, perpetuating damaging assumptions about Nigerian men. Despite having hired a private investigator to dig into Michael's past, the results revealed that Michael was innocent of any wrongdoing. However, Angela refused to accept these findings, choosing instead to continue her campaign of defamation against him. Michael revealed, I tried to be a good husband, a supportive partner, but Angela always saw me through a lens of suspicion and mistrust. She would accuse me of cheating on her, even when I had done nothing wrong. It became unbearable. Angela's accusations didn't stop at scamming. She branded him a womanizer and a thief, going so far as to imply that he was using her for financial gain. Michael, however, countered these claims with evidence to the contrary. Angela even hired a private investigator, he explained, and they found nothing, nothing to suggest I had ever been unfaithful or dishonest with her. Still, Angela's relentless attacks continued, becoming more vicious and personal as time went on. Michael delved deeper into the emotional abuse he faced, describing how Angela treated him more like a servant than a spouse. She shouted at me in front of guests, in public, and on social media. I was not her equal. I was her subordinate, he said with a heavy sigh. I remember one night we were hosting some of her friends. I tried to speak, to contribute to the conversation, but Angela cut me off, shouting at me to be quiet. She embarrassed me in front of everyone, and it was one of many instances. I was made to feel like I had no voice, no respect, and no worth in her eyes. Michael went on to describe the living conditions Angela subjected him to. While Angela enjoyed the comfort of a master bedroom, Michael was relegated to what he described as a servant's room. The small, cramped space was far removed from the shared marital quarters one might expect. I wasn't allowed to sleep with her in the same room, he recounted, his voice tinged with a mix of hurt and disbelief. Instead, she gave me a room that was barely suitable for a guest, let alone a husband. It was like I was her servant, not her spouse. The emotional abuse extended beyond just living arrangements. Michael described how Angela exerted financial control over him, which was another significant factor that led to his decision to leave. Angela grabbed all the money, Michael continued. Every cent that was ours, she took and kept to herself. I had no access to any of it. I couldn't even buy something for myself without asking her first. She treated me like a child, like I couldn't be trusted with our finances. Michael explained that Angela's financial manipulation went further than just controlling his access to money. She would make it seem like I was financially dependent on her, like I was there to take advantage of her wealth. But the truth is, I had no access to anything. I was kept in the dark about our finances, and she used money as a weapon to control me. According to Michael, Angela's control over the money also extended to her family and friends, who she would use as pawns in her manipulative games. She would often tell her friends and family that I was only with her for money, making them suspicious of me, turning them against me. But I was never interested in her money, I was interested in a partnership, in building a life together. Michael Ilisami's experience on 90 Day Fiancé has been anything but ordinary. While reality TV often portrays the drama between couples, 
Few fans realize the extent of Angela Deem's efforts to make Michael look bad and disturb his life both on and off camera. Angela's relentless pursuit to control the narrative of their relationship not only harmed Michael's reputation, but also affected his emotional well-being, social connections, and professional opportunities. The damage was far-reaching, leaving scars that would take years to heal. Angela's attempts to defame Michael were not limited to casual remarks or minor outbursts. Instead, she launched what could be considered a calculated campaign of character assassination. Publicly, Angela accused Michael of being a scammer who had married her only to secure a visa and eventually gain access to her money. She repeatedly told the world that Michael was a typical Nigerian scammer, feeding into harmful stereotypes about Nigerian men. This narrative, while completely false, found traction among some of her fans and viewers who were quick to believe her baseless allegations. Michael explained, Every time she went on social media or gave an interview, she would make these horrible accusations. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew how to manipulate people's perceptions of me, how to play the victim, and make me look like the villain. Angela took to platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and even fan forums to paint Michael as a gold digger and a fraud. Her accusations were constant, relentless, and very public. These constant defamations began to weigh heavily on Michael, who felt powerless to defend himself against the lies she spread. Even when evidence cleared Michael of any wrongdoing, like the private investigator Angela hired to check his fidelity and honesty, the damage was already done. The seeds of doubt had been sown in the minds of countless fans, who often did not see or hear the whole story. It didn't matter if I was innocent, Michael lamented. Angela had already poisoned the well, and so many people believed her lies because she was so loud, so persistent. It became an uphill battle just to prove that I was a decent person. Angela's vendetta against Michael didn't stop at public forums, it reached deep into his personal life. Angela often manipulated Michael's friends and even his family members, turning them against him. She would frequently call Michael's friends and family in Nigeria, sharing her distorted version of events, accusing Michael of cheating, lying, and stealing from her. This relentless smear campaign created tension between Michael and those closest to him, straining his relationships. Angela called my mother and told her terrible things about me. Michael shared, visibly distressed. She would say that I was using her, that I was a bad person, and that I was making her life miserable. My mother was so confused. She didn't know who to believe because she had only seen the edited clips of us arguing on TV. Angela's words made her question my integrity, and it hurt deeply. Even worse, Angela would manipulate conversations with mutual friends, telling them that Michael was only with her for a green card, casting aspersions on his character. This created a domino effect where people in Michael's circle began to distance themselves, unsure of who to believe. I lost friends because of Angela, Michael confessed. People who were once close to me began to view me with suspicion. They would avoid my calls or make excuses not to meet up. Angela's lies created a cloud of doubt around me, and it was heartbreaking. Angela's influence also extended into Michael's professional life. Michael, who had aspirations of building a career, faced numerous setbacks due to Angela's public defamation. Potential employers and business partners were cautious about associating with me, he explained. They would see the show, hear Angela's accusations, and suddenly I was this untrustworthy person. People didn't want to hire someone who was being portrayed as a scammer on TV. Angela's accusations affected not only his job prospects, but also his entrepreneurial efforts. Michael had plans to start a small business in Nigeria, but Angela's public rants about him being a con artist had reached even those who might have been interested in investing or partnering with him. I was trying to start my own venture back home, something that would support my family and build a future, Michael said. But Angela's words traveled fast. People were wary, and they didn't want to be associated with someone who was labeled a fraud in such a public manner. On several occasions, Michael had opportunities lined up that were suddenly withdrawn once the potential partners did a quick search online and found Angela's accusations. One time, I was in talks with a local company that was interested in collaborating with me for some promotional work, 
Michael recalled. Everything seemed fine until they Googled my name. After that, they never returned my calls or emails. Angela's defamation cost me my livelihood. The impact of Angela's campaign against Michael went beyond the external. It seeped into his mental health, causing severe emotional distress. Michael admitted to experiencing bouts of anxiety and depression due to the constant negative attention and pressure. I was always looking over my shoulder, wondering what Angela would do next, what she would say about me, he revealed. I started to feel paranoid, always worried about who was talking about me and what they were saying. Michael described nights of sleeplessness, where he would stay awake, worrying about the next wave of insults, accusations, and character attacks. He feared the phone calls, the messages from friends and family questioning him, and the comments from strangers who believed Angela's lies. I became withdrawn, he confessed. I didn't want to talk to people, didn't want to go out. I felt like I was constantly defending myself and it was exhausting. He explained that the constant stress took a toll on his health as well. Michael began to experience physical symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and loss of appetite. The stress was eating me alive, he said. I started losing weight and my health deteriorated. My mind was always racing with anxiety, worrying about what she would do next. It was like living in a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. Angela's actions even pushed Michael to consider therapy as he struggled to cope with the constant barrage of negativity. I felt like I needed professional help, he admitted. I couldn't handle it on my own. I started seeing a counselor just to find some peace, to try and make sense of what was happening to me. Angela's behavior was not just a personal attack, it was a full-blown assault on Michael's public image. As a cast member of 90 Day Fiancé, Michael had a public persona that was constantly under scrutiny. Angela knew this and used it to her advantage. Every time Michael tried to share his side of the story or even remain silent, Angela would find a way to twist the narrative, making him look worse. She would release videos on social media crying, shouting, and accusing Michael of new misdeeds. She would appear on podcasts, interviews, and live streams, always positioning herself as the victim of a grand betrayal by Michael. She was very strategic, Michael explained. She knew that if she could keep the drama alive, people would stay on her side. She was very good at playing the victim, and the media ate it up. Angela's constant need for attention meant she would go to any lengths to keep her version of events in the public eye. She would leak private messages, make outrageous claims, and even insult Michael's friends and family. This not only made Michael look bad, but also created a hostile environment where he was constantly being attacked by strangers online. I received thousands of hateful messages, Michael recalled. People who had never met me, who didn't know me, were calling me all sorts of names, sending threats, saying I should be ashamed of myself. It was overwhelming. Angela's influence reached its peak on social media platforms where she would rally her followers against Michael, encouraging them to believe her side of the story. She often went on live streams to discuss the alleged wrongs Michael had committed against her, allowing her followers to leave nasty comments and perpetuate rumors. These smear campaigns were strategic, timed to coincide with specific events or milestones in Michael's life, ensuring that he was constantly under a cloud of suspicion. I would log onto social media, and there it was, hundreds of comments attacking me, doubting my character, calling me names, Michael recalled. She knew how to rile people up, how to keep them angry at me. It felt like a coordinated attack. Angela would frequently tag Michael in posts filled with accusations, ensuring her followers would swarm to his profiles, leaving derogatory comments and harassing him. Her use of social media as a weapon had severe repercussions for Michael's mental health and his online presence. The negativity made it almost impossible for him to build a positive public image or maintain a healthy online environment. I had to block hundreds of people, report threats, and even consider shutting down my accounts, Michael said. But then I realized that if I did that, it would look like I was hiding or guilty of something. Over time, the constant public humiliation began to take its toll on Michael. He recounted a particularly distressing incident where Angela berated him in public, accusing him of infidelity and calling him names. She called me a scammer, a thief, a liar, everything under the sun. 
She did this in public, in front of people, in front of cameras. She wanted to destroy my reputation, my dignity. She wanted everyone to see me as this horrible person, which I am not, Michael said, his voice breaking slightly. I tried to defend myself, but she always found a way to make it look like I was the bad guy. He continued, I felt completely isolated. Angela had a way of making me feel like I was alone, even when I was surrounded by people. She would undermine my relationships with friends and family, convincing them that I was a bad person, someone who couldn't be trusted. I lost so much because of her, my confidence, my reputation, my peace. Michael also described the physical isolation he experienced. Angela's controlling behavior extended to his social life. She would monitor his phone, track his conversations, and limit his interactions with others. She always had to know where I was, who I was talking to, what I was doing. She was like a warden, constantly watching, constantly waiting for me to slip up, Michael shared. I couldn't have a normal life. I couldn't have normal relationships. I felt like a prisoner. After enduring years of emotional abuse, financial manipulation, and public humiliation, Michael made the difficult decision to leave Angela. It wasn't easy to walk away, he admitted. I had invested so much in this relationship. I loved Angela, despite everything, and I wanted to make it work. But I realized that I was losing myself in the process. I was losing my dignity, my happiness, my future. Michael explained that leaving Angela was the first step toward reclaiming his life and his independence. I needed to take back control, he said. I needed to show myself that I deserved better, that I was worth more than the way she treated me. I had to find my own way, my own happiness, away from her toxic behavior. Since leaving Angela, Michael has begun to rebuild his life, focusing on his career, personal growth, and finding joy in everyday moments. He has received an outpouring of support from friends, family, and fans who have seen his side of the story and empathized with his struggles. I've received so many messages from people who understand what I went through, who have experienced similar things, Michael shared. It's been a journey, but I'm finally finding peace. Michael's decision to speak out marks a turning point in his journey toward healing and self-empowerment. While he acknowledges that there are still challenges ahead, he is determined to move forward with his life, free from the toxic dynamics that defined his relationship with Angela. I want to live my life authentically, he said. I want to be true to myself, and I want to find a love that is based on respect, kindness, and mutual understanding, not control, manipulation, or fear. As for Angela, Michael remains resolute in his decision to cut ties and focus on his future. I wish her the best, he concluded, but I can't go back. I've made my choice and I'm choosing me. With Michael's newfound confidence and determination to move on, fans are left wondering what the future holds for him. But one thing is certain, Michael is ready to take control of his narrative and live a life that is true to who he is, without the shadow of Angela's control looming over him. Thank you for watching.